I mean, I, I, I don't know the immunity against Islam. No, no that's fine. Are you from the south or north? South. South, yeah. <laughs> hence, hence why you're here. <laughs> hence why you're here. Okay, very, very briefly. Um, so what we say in terms of a position of our certainty of a creator is we look at a universe in itself. Now, a universe from nothing makes no sense because nothing by definition means the absence of everything in anything. So that's the number one impossibility. Number two, did the universe create itself? Which is analogous to that can a mother create herself? Makes no sense whatever. It then only leads us to a conclusion that something created the universe. Established science tells us that the universe came into existence some 13.8 billion years ago from a supernatural event that occurred. Of that there is no doubt. And as a result of the universe, it, we, ha we have the various elements which went forth. As me and you speak now, if I put my hand out towards you, what, what have we got in between? We've got space, time, matter, energy and so forth. And these are all the result of the Big Bang taking place. So what we say in reference to this is that there, something has to be there in order to, to perpetuate it. And we are, everything else in existence is contingent upon something un un unless you have the, the necessary contingent being. So we could have been made in any other set of circumstances. For example, me and yourself, we could have been born in Russia and we, we could have been female, female as an example. But the fact that we are existing in a particular way, so therefore we are in those set of um, contingent things, which are contingent on other matters. So whatever has to be outside that set is in itself contingent. So it has to be outside that set. Does it make sense? Everything which is contingent. So you're aware of the Abyssinian arguments, yeah. Aristotle, Aristotelian argument that he presents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it's quite convincing. I, I, I think it has a lot of weight. Yeah. I think the only sort of ways out of it um, are to kind of say that everything is contingent upon each other, like yes. circularly almost. So, but even then, you, what, you, you, what you'll be defining is yeah. that if you're saying it's circular, yeah. but there has to be something independent of that, in order for that circulation to be um, um, to exist, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I think, but I, I, I just I don't know which. So what we're saying is that by by default, you saying that the contingencies of each of these entities, as an example, is contingent upon and it's circular, but then it has to have something independent in order for that circularity to occur. Because it has to be outside that set in order for it to be circular. Right, but sure, they, they could be, but it doesn't mean that it has to exist. But it has to be outside, for something to be contingent upon something else, yeah. per infinitum, doesn't make any sense because we're then looking at the argument of infinite regression. I think this is not infinite regression, this is circular. Yeah, yeah, this is circular, but if something comes into existence, like the universe as an example, or multiverse, it would have come about by a contingent set of things, just say in, in the example, a multitude of different universes. Hence, it would have still required something outside of that set in order to, to perpetuate it. I, I understand, I, I don't know, it's like the same attributes we, we give God that uncreated always existed, not, not in terms of time, but just causally, it's always been there. Always there, yes. So, I, this is the only sort of wiggle, wiggle room that I have for yeah. the is yeah. that, okay, why can't we say that about the universe as a, you know, the bouncing universe? Okay. Okay, and then that's, that universe has always existed. It's just, sure, it's contingent in that, you know, with, within the universe, things are contingent upon each other. Yes. But so something universe. has to be outside that set in order for that formulation of contingent existent beings to continue. Something has to initiate that in itself, you see. It has to be outside of the set because it then, it, then it's, it, it necessitates that it's self-dependent. Um, self so you're still giving it the same characterization. That an independent... Think about what I just said there. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So what you're, what you're characterizing is, in essence, is by these sets of contingent things, which are contingent upon each other, are basing it upon its existence in a conceptual manner. And what it then requires is a, is a set outside of that contingent set yeah. in order to initiate it. But why does it need to initiate a circular thing? Because, the whole point of a circular thing is that it's not initiated. Yeah, it's not considered, but we know that these sets of contingent points or contingent things are, in the, what you're in, in, in fact saying is that they are independent within themselves. 
So this circuit, but so therefore, if you're saying that, then, then what you're implying there is a contingent set of independent things, which has to then start with an independent initial source. Does that make sense? Yeah, I need to reread. <laughs> you have to reread. Yeah. So in itself, your argument of the circularity of the of the yeah, the, the whole set. The whole set yes. So then, what, what my argument in essence would be that 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 set of contingent uh, things has to be in essence contingent upon something outside of that set because by definition you are saying that that contingent set is independent within itself of circularity and hence it has to have something outside that set in order for that contingent thing right. to have the circular thing so in, it, in itself you're arguing for um, um, independency you just yes which is oh god yeah and okay that makes sense yeah yeah i love this you can go forever yes yes of course yeah I guess if you have the whole set of contingent things, yes. the set has the properties of its elements. Yes. In that the set itself is contingent. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's a whole composition balancing That's right, yes. I was reading up, in fact, yesterday upon yeah. a, a, a well known Muslim. Um, uh, person who, who dissects these arguments so as you mentioned the composition fallacy but hence that same ar that argument which I just relate to you still remains you see so your argument is in essence a set of contingent things we, what we say is impossible existences so when you have a set of possible contingent set of existences then it has to have an initiator why because then you are again as I repeat you are arguing for that contingent set to be independent within itself and therefore ca carrying that et attribute of te the technical term is known as arse. Arse, which you will be familiar with, means self-dependent or self-sufficient. So therefore, you are still prevaric. You're giving that as to uh, as to God or some form of something being there, which has to be outside of that set of existing things, which needs to be outside of that set. If you see what I mean, and it's a bit of a verbal uh, like uh, gymnastics, but in essence, this is what makes things um, very much discernible in this way. You see. And I think you know what I'm speaking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, think, I think I get what you mean. Yeah, you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of the really smart religious people I talk to, they, they say these things. I'm like, I have no counter argument. I'm like, okay. Good man. Good man. So what we say, you see, then, with that being in place, and the arguments of Avi Sina or, uh, or commonly in Islamic narrative, um, Ibn Sina and then the arguments of Imam Ghazali and all these other famous um, philosophers and other such people. We also make reference to the Quran itself, but Allah says, did they create themselves? You know, did the universe, did, in the Quran, which you've got a copy of, did they create themselves? Which is the analogy of, um, did a mother create herself as an example, just from the, so what we're, what we're in, in, in fact saying then, hence, is that um, it makes perfect sense that with there being a divine creator, that he doesn't make us purposelessly. So we don't have this deistic understanding, but rather theistic understanding, in the sense that he then guides us upon how we live our lives, because it makes no sense that God creates us purposelessly and simply says, all right, get on with it. I'll see you in a few thousand years. I won't send you any guidance, but I'll judge you. Then I'll put you in an eternal abode. It hence makes sense that he gives us a manual of how to lead one's life. Um. So that's the one which, which, which is a bit of a leap for you, is it? I guess, I guess that's like, um, once we get the whole, so there's a self-sufficient creator and then, and then contingent things. Yeah. Why does it, because then, then there's like the arguments like attributing that creator with like theism, so act, sort of like quite active. Um, yeah, an active participant, yeah. participant in the running of the universe, yeah, which then, makes sense, you see. Because if we're to examine the universe in the way in its um, infant stage, how it spread forth to the decimal point, had it not gone in that exact way, it would have relapsed uh, upon itself. So it's, everything seems to be fine-tuned. So I'm sure you're aware of the fine-tuned yeah, yeah, argument yeah. as well, which is you know, the way, for example, the eye, the DNA of the eye, which I'm sure you're aware of, which, without us going into technical detail on each and every point. But I love the contingency argument and the way it's formulated. It's slightly of slight variation or a difference to the first cause argument, which can have some holes in it. Yeah. But um, I think the contingency is pretty much watertight in many yeah, in many. I like, I like the contingency. I'm definitely happy to concede that. Yes. So Oh, I, maybe I'm conceding that there is a creator. Excellent. But I'm not. I You're not I'm necessitating still, that creator then. I think I don't have the inertia to then say, okay, that's got to be a god that has his attributes. Right. Um, and that connects with our ideas of God. Um, 
I, I don't know. I, I just because in a, because the hard. the plausibility of of something inanimate created, is just incomprehensible. So I think we can just push that aside uh, totally. What does inanimate mean? Though? I mean something which has no will, no conscious, and it simply create. It's like a it's it's not comprehensible. It's something so vast can have something without any conscious will. So a good example I like to use is a mobile phone. And of course, from your country, they're very much skilled at making all these phones, Samsung in particular. So um, just imagine 70 years ago, I was to hand this device over to you and say, operate it. Naturally, you're going to ask, how am I going to do this? So I'd have to give you a manual, an instruction sheet. So hence, it makes more sense for us that a creator is communicating, is playing an active part in our lives and what we invoke and what we do as individuals. So once the centrality of his message is given and it makes sense, for example, we've discussed the contingency argument to a brief extent. And then I think that the natural leap then into an accepting of a creator is easier. You know why it's easier? Because we've we, we seek to establish the main stumbling block, which would have been the existence of a creator. So it makes, for me, it makes perfect sense that a conscious will would have created this mobile phone. It couldn't have come about by nothing. A great example I can use, just say you get um, all the necessary re uh, recipe to make a, a dish. Just say a dish which requires many substances. If you place all the dishes, so all those necessary recipes, I beg your pardon, on the table, if you give it a million years, can a delicious chicken stew be made? Never. Well, that's, that's the thing. So a stew is like, you, you, it's like entropically very hard to do. Yes. And I think the same, the same, as you guys say, goes for consciousness, will, yes. and human emotion. And all that. It, yeah. That's so complicated. How can you, how can you ever create that from just inanimate, you know, processes? Precisely. Yes. Yeah. Some kind of will above that. Right. Sort of Yes. Yes. I think, I think that's very um, less logically, but more like emotionally compelling, right? In a sense. I think it's. I think it's both. I think it's quite um, um, logically quite compelling as well, because for example, gravity is a great example. We can't see it yet. We know it exists. There is no empirical evidence for it either. It's not namely such that we can do certain experiments which implies it, but we cannot show say for certain. So the gravitational forces, for example, that which thinks that we drop, we don't know what. If I drop a penny on the floor, we can't feel it, we can't touch it, we can't smell it, we can't do anything to prove that it, yet it exists. So we can use reasonable argumentations for such an understanding. So in the terms of our step of God, for me, whilst we're having this conversation, is that we've, for me, we've crossed that herd of God's existence, for, as far as I'm concerned. And I think you are more now, perhaps after the conversation, more akin to looking at that possibility. And then we can observe the next step, I think, is easier than the preceding, much far easier in, in terms of a, a, a theistic being who plays an active part in our existence. And we will be returned to that being because we are here by, in, in, in essence, it's a miracle that we're here. Everything is conducive to this particular form of life. So then, you know, we will be raised up to God one day and accountable for our actions. Makes perfect sense. Hence the natural intrinsic understand that God also says, and this is more of an argument for faith and emotion, I would accept this in terms of the, the Arabic term called fitra, which God has put in each and every single one of our as, as human beings, an inclination towards him, even those who reject him. Because even those who are, but once you, that inert feeling, or, or rather uh, that innate feeling, I beg your pardon, that's a word I've incorrectly used in the past. So that innate feeling that one has towards a creator is amongst even those who reject, because at the end of the day, that's an inclination within us. Each and every human being has that inclination. And at some point in their life, they will consider that. So that's an Arabic word, it's called fitra, to know our creator, to know what it's all about. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm on that journey right now. Maybe you are, maybe you are. So God will, inshallah, if you're sincere, God, we believe, if you're sincere, because Islam is not, is not like a religion like anything else. It actually demands investigation. It demands the acumen. It's not happy just to leave it as faith and forget about the rest. You have to use your brain. You have to use your model. Yeah. So it's a, it's a challenge within itself. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, no one's perfect, but I, I am, I'm definitely trying to... No, you do. Oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah.
going to investigate Christianity and Islam? We'll start, start with the main ones first. Yeah, so what we say about the Abrahamic faiths is that Islam is the completion of the Abrahamic faiths. It puts to rest and to bed some of the uncertain nuances which have developed particularly amongst Christians in regards to their belief of the Trinity, which is full of par par paradoxy, yeah. it's full of um, you know, um, uncertain like ambiguity. Yeah, yeah, which is unfortunately what in this country, for example, people would be mainly adherents to that particular understanding. However, more and more people are understanding is just t totally, you know, out of it. So it, the Islamic concept fits much better in terms of the discussions that we've just had in terms of contingency and so forth. And by that particular uh, methodology, we then imply and, 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 and resonate with, with each other that there can only be a singular creator who's created the whole universe and Islam is very proportionate in that relentless theme as you will see reading the Quran that that's one only one God the one creator who's created the whole universe there is nothing comparable to him it says in the Quran say he is Allah the one the eternally besought of all he begetteth not neither is he begotten and there is nothing comparable to him nothing so hence he's totally unlike his creation which is analogous to these arguments that we raised in the discussions that we had. And hence, it makes perfect sense, you see. It makes perfect sense. And it's the Abrahamic faith who had this concept of the one true God from Judaism, Christianity and Islam. So Islam claims to be the final revelation given by God to mankind. It claims to be the only book on the face of the earth which is uncorrupted and, and more singularly, a book which is ex the express word of God. It's not a multiplicity of different authorships, like the New Testament. And the, these are multiple different authors. Some, you have some remnants of the words, words of God. You have uh, different authors, different people who are propelling their beliefs. So this is, a, so for example, the four Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, which you may be familiar with. Did you know John's Gospel, the fourth one, has got so many different authors to it? which went through several stages of redaction before it came into its judging, bearing in mind the early stages of Christian history. Yeah, it's very human. Human in its influence, yes. Particularly John's Gospel, which um, you know, is deemed by even Christian historians and Christian theologians and, uh, and scholars who are themselves hold on to that belief. However, their conclusive studies um, contradict their fundamental beliefs in, on the Trinity, as an example, based upon the uh, unreliability of the historic, historicity of John's Gospel, as an example. So what we then say is that Islam best suits the purpose of one's emotional needs, one's requirement with our Creator and what is the requirement for us as human beings to remind everyone that we are one day going to perish. Neither, neither yourself or, or myself were here 80 years ago, neither of us are going to be here by all likelihood in another 100 years. So there's an intermittent reality in between and we have to be ready for our end. And there is, this is not nothing afterwards because those who mock and say people of religious are, 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 are fools. The fact that we're here in the very first place is in itself testification of miracle. So for God it won't be difficult to raise. So we, are, we have this one life. We have to judge, we have to be ready for the, passing the test of this life to acknowledge our Creator. That's what it's all about. This is hence the reality of everything. It's not a reasoning just so that every human can feel, find some contentment or some you know, ease to doing it. It's a requirement for us to tell people this is the reality. And so we, we, we are required in the Islamic paradigm to use all forms of logic and all forms of reasoning in order to bring people together. Yeah. And hence, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that's, that's very helpful actually. Thank you very much. Fantastic. I think I'll, I'll have a read of this because, as you mentioned, there's a lot of things that the Quran kind of says about its own self being the spoken word of God. Through Muhammad, still. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's a lot to sort of glean from that that I haven't been able to, without having to read it. You know, if you hear from other sources, all yeah, no, of like, course, of course, that's know. brilliant. I really enjoy speaking to you. You can watch yeah. our discussion today on the on a station called Dawa to Soul. Do you want to note that on your phone? Yeah, let me. Can you can subscribe to it as well. You'll get notification when the video comes up. Dawa. Yeah. So D A W A H. The figure two, okay. soul, S O U L. I like that. Fantastic. Very, very with the, yeah. with the internet. Yeah, with the internet. Yeah. Um, that's that. Yeah, that's that. A brother's channel. Let me, let me What's your name? Sorry. I, I yeah, my name is Mustafa. I, I don't own the channel. Oh, 
but yeah, we've had a great conversation and it'll be on tonight. Yeah, it's been so a delight for speaking to you. Yeah, Do you into, and carry on reading, that's your way. Are you an Oxford Uni student? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no wonder you're a sharp guy, so I'm <laughs> sure you're going to achieve much in your life. But remember, there's always, you know, we're only here for a limited time, yeah. Cool. I'm on, I'm on a number of these videos as well, further down maybe. There I am. There you are. Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, it's my fault. Just here I am. I'm speaking to a Christian lady who wanted to know about Christianity. Um, yeah, so you, you'll come up and um, you, um, enjoy it. Subscribe to it. You get notification. Okay. Thank you very much. Delighted yeah. to meet you. You're a gentleman. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself.